Well, hi there, boys and girls. This chapter is going to be dedicated basically to two things. And number one, if we have a derivative, can we go back and find the original function? And number two, if we have a derivative, if we can't go back and find the original function, can we use at least use that derivative to approximate our original function around a certain area? Um, today we're going to be talking about finding the particular or general solution based on a differential equation. It's basically just a little puzzle. Here's a derivative. Can you go backwards and find the original function? So today we're going to be able to find the original function. We'll do the approximations later on. Now some of the questions that you're going to see here are very similar to the differential equations quiz that's going to be due Monday night. You will find that out tomorrow. Um, so anyway, make sure that you have these written down. There are some steps that you have to go by to start this, and we'll, we will formalize this later. But for now, if you have a differential equation, this means that you are given a derivative. You are given either f prime in that notation, or the notation might be dy dx. We've seen both of those. What you're going to do, first of all, is you're going to separate the variables. And you no addition or subtraction here. You must multiply or divide, get the x's and y's on opposite sides. Your dx and dy must always be in the numerator. They can never be in the denominator. Then you're going to integrate both sides, and you're going to add a plus c with the x side. You could add a plus c to both sides, but just for so we're all on the same page, we'll just put the plus c on the other side and say that it absorbed all of the constants. At that point, we're going to break off into either a general solution or a particular solution. Uh, let me just show you some examples. I don't want to get too technical with this because this is not that difficult. So here we go. We are supposed to find the general solution. If you see the word general solution, you are going to stop with plus c. This means that you did not know a point on the curve, and there's no way to find the particular solution. So here's what we're going to do first of all. Step one is we separate the variables by cross multiplying or dividing. But here I'm going to multiply both sides by dx. And that's going to give me that dy equals 2x squared minus 8x. All I did there was distribute this. You can do that dx. So I'm, this is equivalent to that. Now our second step is to integrate both sides. So we are going to integrate dy and we're going to integrate 2x squared minus 8x dx. So here we go. Let's just do this. What is the integral of 1 dy? Well that answer is y. If that would have been the integral of dr, this answer would be r. If that was integral of dx, it would be x. So this is y. On this side, we've seen this before, this is not too bad. 2 thirds x cubed minus 8x squared over 2, and you have to add a plus c. Now do you remember why we have to add this plus c here? Does anyone know? That's because when you take the derivative of something and the derivative of a constant goes away and there's no way to tell if we had a constant after the derivative has been taken. So if we clean this up, we get 2 thirds x cubed minus 4x squared plus c. Hey, let's check our work. Let's find dy dx. If you take the derivative of what we have, dy dx, you get the 3 comes down and cancels 2x squared minus 8x of course, the derivative of the constant is 0, and this can be factored. The 2x comes out as x minus 4. So I have found the correct general solution. It's general because the plus c. I'm not sure what that number was, or even if there was one there. That's called a general solution to the differential equation. Not too bad. I, I sort of organized it, made you do a couple of steps there, but basically it's a puzzle. Here's a derivative. Can you go back to the original function, at least a general original function? All right, let's take a look at a particular solution. Particular solution means that you know a point on f of x. So you will be able to solve for the plus c. So here I know that f prime is 7x minus 6. I'm going to rewrite that as dy dx equals 7x minus 6. So basically here's a derivative of some function. 
can we go back and find the particular solution f of x that goes through the point 1 comma 3 halves that might say it travels through 1 comma 3 halves that's the same thing as f of 1 equals 3 halves well let's just separate our variables the dx goes to the other side so this is dy equals 7x minus 6 dx then we integrate and so I get y equals 7 halves x squared minus 6x. Don't forget the plus c. You have to have it there. That's how we're going to figure out this particular solution. So now, now, that, I go, now that I have my general solution, I'm going to go find my particular solution. And that is by, this is what they'll say on the AP rubric, handling the initial condition. Now the initial condition simply means the original point that you were given. This is the IC. That's the initial condition. So we have to deal with that. The 1 is your X, the 3 halves is your Y. So I'm going to put 3 halves for your Y, and if we put a 1 in for these X's, that's 7 halves minus 6 plus C. And so um, I'll go ahead and let's see, 6 can be rewritten as what, 12 halves? 3 halves equals, and then 7 halves minus 12 halves is negative 5 halves. Oh, look at that 5. There we go, plus C. Make sure I did that right again. 6 is 8 halves, oh, 12 halves, right? And then 7 minus 12, yes, I have it right. And then add 5 halves to both sides, you get at 8 halves is equal C. So C is 4. So I now know what goes right there. So my particular solution is Y equals 7 halves X squared minus 6X plus 4. This is not general, it's particular because I know the exact specific explicit equation for Y equals it was this right here. So this is called a particular solution. That's where we do one step further and we handle the C. All right, let's take a look at um, another example where I've got y's and x's. So I want you to see separation of variables. We're going to cross multiply and we're going to get y minus 6 dy equals x minus 1 dx. The dx's and dy's have to be in the numerator, so I took this dx to the other side and I cross multiplied, brought the y minus 6 over here. Now we're going to integrate. The integral of y dy is y squared over 2. The integral of 6 dy is 6y. Don't worry about putting the plus c here. We're just going to put the plus c on the other side. Now over here, I've got 1 half x squared minus x. And we'll put the plus c here and we'll say that this c absorbed any of the constants that were on the left-hand side. Now at this point you're going to just work through, and this might be an answer, we don't need to solve this for y equals because I got y in two places, but you will typically see fractions being cleared. And this is going to be weird here, because when I multiply 2 times a constant, I'm still just going to call it a constant. So I'm going to multiply this by 2, and all this by 2, that will clear my fractions. So I will get that y squared minus 12y equals x squared minus 2x. Now here, 2 times c, I'm just going to still call c. I'll, I guess I'll call it c sub 1, but it's just still a constant. Multiplying a constant times 2, it just it still keeps it as a constant. So this one might be an answer. Sometimes you'll see them written with everything on one side. They'll bring the x squared over here and the 2x over here and set it equal to c. You'll probably see a question very similar to this whenever you take your differential equations quiz, that is due Monday. So then again, this is just a general solution. Why is it a general solution? Because you did not know a point on the curve. All right, last one. We want to see which one of these is a solution to this differential equation. Here I've got 2y prime minus 6x squared has to equal 0. And I have here bubbled in the correct answer. I want to show you why this is true. Since y equals x cubed plus 3, what is y prime, or dy dx? Well, that would be 3x squared. Let's see if that is a solution to this. 2y prime minus 6x squared does it equal 0. Well, 2y prime would be 2 times 3x squared minus 6x squared. Does this equal 0? And the answer, of course, is yes. 
Now, why wasn't it C? What was wrong with C? Well, y prime for C would have been 2x. And 2 times y prime minus 6x squared does not equal 0. So all you're doing here is you're finding an equation that you can plug it in, in here. You plug in your y prime and see if the algebra works out correctly. By the way, this is also something very similar to what you'll see on your differential. Differential equations quiz this due Monday. Anyway, um, that's, that's all for differential equations, all the examples I can think of. So I will see you guys tomorrow.